Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, daily trading recap for this Monday, the 25th of October, 2021, coming into the close of the month here. Is this the last week of the month that we got? Um, yeah, the last week of October, so we're looking to end it with a bang. A little red day for me in the PL, but pretty hard red day for all the big movers out there. Very, very interesting day market wise, just to, uh, you know, subsequent after that incredible, amazing day we had Friday. So lots to go over in this introduction that I wanted to hit upon. Let's get on these market internals first, just for reference of myself. NASDAQ $231 billion volume. As of right now, we are 12 minutes after the close. And I see $225 billion volume. Oh, wow. First time. I think that I've ever seen it, that bigger dollar volume in the NASDAQ than in the NICE. Pretty interesting well to see in that regard. OTC's $2.3 billion volume. Spied a little bit of a dip out of the open hard selling, which we will get into with all the other big movers that had similar type of effect. And I see it here, just hard red candle after hard red candle and immediately programmed in my mind is dip by. <laughs> I had, as it was finding a little bit of a base here, before I checked the ADD and the tick, which I did, very routinely, religiously, when I was trading the SPY very early on in my trading career. Uh, kind of saw the dip bottom here. It, yeah, you could call this, consider it a hard sell-off, but again, how far it is from VWAP and how much dollar volume there was there from the beginning. It's like 431,000 shares traded within that first minute. It's not like this was set in motion to be a panic type of action right out of the gate. So even, so I did buy one contract and I ended up selling, I think I bought it within you know, this first or second green candle here and then ended up selling in this little pullback I thought I was looking for the immediate quick reversal for how many times we've we seen that out of spy that dip buys provide very clean and efficient price action that's sometimes it's just hard V that gets put in for whatever reason so being able to profit off of that I was looking for that scalpy style of trade with one contract in the options market but didn't work out I ended up taking for a two dollar loss so like three dollar loss in total um, but what a freaking fake out that was it's always looking back at these style of trades it's like seeing it come back up to the upside of 455 dollars it's like oh i would have been up so much on my one contract and those would have made this pno blah, blah, blah. but yeah i would not have been holding this long it's that's always the crux for every style of trade it doesn't even have to be spy specifically too but of oh i continue to go on from here like i could have made like this much more money if i held my full position size of like get out of that mentality you traded it how you traded it learn from it move on but don't try to just play games, play these lottery fantasy land games with it of what it is. Chris traded it pretty well from the dip buy there, but uh, that was what I did on the spy. I got a little faked out on that. I wanted to show ADD and take, of course, too, just in that when the time frame I was buying it. So looking around this like 943-ish mark, we were positive on the ADD, which is the advanced decline line, which is the number of companies that are printing green above their previous trading days close. We were still in the green, so around this 9.45 time frame where that dip was being put in. We're getting a little bit, you know, shaky around, or like it's looking like it's going to be bouncing green here, but in my head still, still too, that's not necessarily the uh, emphasis that, okay, this is the dip by bottom being put in. We want to see exhaustive numbers and measures being put in with these indicators to show that, okay, there's, there is really no more range that this can go. Whereas in my mind, we're still so far up on the ADD and especially the tick two that we'll look at as well. These things could go, there could be so much more selling behind this that has not yet even come on it. We're not exhausted whatsoever. So this doesn't even necessarily have to be a dip bottom. It can look like it's selling off hard, but we can certainly be in store for a lot more pain to the downside, especially that it's a Monday. It's all fresh. We can, and for where these lines are at the tick. Uh, so we're looking at the daybreak here, start of the day, coming to that 943 time frame right here. Again, we're kind of hovering around still like that zero mark for companies that are printing, for tickers in the IC that are printing green on that minute candle or printing red on that minute candle. There's still plenty more opportunity. We're not even close to 600, which is getting on the verge of uh, exhaustive to that point. So I think it's still being very cautious in that mindset of walk, tread very lightly here, even with your one contract. I think it was trading one out of the money for that dip by opportunity for a call. But be very cautious. Okay, getting in around this time frame, it looks like we're going to the upside. We're getting more green prints coming in. So, okay, it looks good right now, but then it starts to fade off and no continuation comes from there too. And we actually start to break down even more so on the tick and the ADD as well. So they kind of diverged from the SPY itself right there, which I have not traded this in a long, long time using these style indicators. So for whatever weight they still provide, 
I really don't have any hard specifics on that as of yet, but they kind of did have a divergence from there on what the actual price action on the SPY itself was today too. So take my little $2 loss and walk away and just learn from it. Take the lesson that was there. Just buy the dip and freaking hold it. Uh, so that was SPY. Also wanted to... So talking about pre-market coming into today too, huge amount of stocks on my scanner. Just as I pulled it up, I was blown away. I have not seen that many stocks pull up in the pre-market in a long, long time, which was good to see. So hot market, more momentum coming in was the idea before that morning bell. And that opening morning gate, the morning bell comes, everything gets wrecked. All of the charts on my screen looking at DWAC just gets pummeled with the nice pre-market action it had today, pummeled, halted to the downside. PHUN, the same thing that mover once again halted to the downside here within that first minute candle, hard selling. The ENE, which I was trading, we'll get into in a little bit here. Halted. Looks like it was coming in pretty nicely with some upper price action. Going to test these little relative pre-market highs, then slam to the downside. In the red, CRTD, which I was also trading. Do that one. Also traded this one as well. Slam to the downside. This was under VWAP during pre-market, but we'll get into that one a little bit more. And then Mark as well too. Just these are just a few of them of the insane movers. Just got hit with a thousand million waterfalls to the downside unfortunate to see and i'm like most of these you know you're looking for even the millionaire named chats the mono the matt monaco's and bryce twoies they're saying hey look for the bounce plays look for i was especially too i was getting the mindset of that mark crook 11 a.m dip by opportunity of hey start to look for maybe not necessarily that i was going to trade it but hey just start to look for that curling type of action if a bottom's going to be part, start to put in at some point where all of these now turned short sellers after seeing a hard sell off in the morning are going to start to be looking for to covering for the morning session just so they don't have to deal with the afternoon crazy session so they can start that predictable pattern it just really didn't come out hard in any of these it was yeah you can kind of justify a little bit of moves here and there on some of these but just didn't have that much oomph for the comeback on any of those either. Uh, but that's why that I'll get into on these two trades as well too, that I, when I get in with pre-market, that everything is looking great and awesome, that I start in with a small position size. And as it becomes the winner, as the trade starts to prove itself with these more, I would say more speculative, just market hype sympathy plays that they were in my book. That's why I start with very small because it's, you know, this isn't necessarily my realm. These are not my cup of tea or what I like to trade as a trader. I don't like to trade the DWAX. I don't like to trade those PHUNs on the crazy parabolicness because that's just not who I am as a trader. I'm not that um, Stephen Ducks. I'm not the Jack Kellogg. It's, it just doesn't fit my personality of, and that's the kind of dilemma that I'm dealing with of, right, how much time do I spend in putting into the review of the DWAX of that crazy move and watching the tape and doing all these things of the GMEs, of the AMCs, if they're only going to be these once a year opportunities, right? Because now that DWAC opportunity is done. It's, it's already gone for like for the rest of the year, probably there's not going to be another DWAC, another PHUN. Uh, there may be, or maybe some nice movers. There may be some nice little panic dip buys, maybe in the OTC world as well too, but it's for moves like that too, multi-day moves. Those are kind of the black swans and yeah, absolutely. The percentage opportunity, the, the liquidity is 100% there. But how much time and effort am I going to put into only that one opportunity for one day? And then if I miss it, then am I going to sit there and say, wow, all of that time spent studying and learning was a waste. Now I just got to wait till the next bus comes in a year. If that happens again, I think just my personality and my taste is more better suited to what is happening every single day. What is a predictable, repeatable, consistent pattern? that is far more frequent than these crazy black swans that do have insane risk reward opportunity if you're able to nail it, just like the Stephen Ducks and the Jack Kelloggs. I think for me and right now, especially where I'm at in my trading career, it's about just nailing that, getting that consistency and what am I able to take away from the market every single day? Even if it's a little tiny slice, the consistency and the repeatability, the identification of it uh, is something certainly that I gravitate towards more. So uh, in all of these two, it was just funny for me that, and all the big movers today, it was, I was just for fun, he's looking up the share locates through trade zero. None of them are really crazy expensive, which I was maybe a little bit surprised to see. I thought, you know, we'd see a little bit higher on the lower floaters, uh, the BENEs, the CRTDs, especially as they were on their way down. 
but it wasn't ridiculous. I mean, yeah, they were still kind of a little bit of expensive. Um, so just whatever that justifies in the fact that there wasn't so much institutional ownership or just hoarding of all the shares that it was so restricted that you just couldn't get anything, whatever that means to how these things will move in the next few days. Um, just an interesting point that I wanted to write down in my journal as well. Mental rating for me today, I would grade myself more as a B rating, not necessarily an A that, uh, but then again, too, I justify it of, because today's type of personality and mentality had to be that uh, Kyle Williams style mentality that he's posting in the chat of, oh, it looks like today's going to be another awesome day. Chris saying the same thing, and I'm even thinking the same thing that I wrote down in my journal as I'm seeing all these movers come up on the scanner again. Oh, it's going to be another awesome squeezy day. Get ready for that hard green percentage moves to the upside on all of these. Look for those crazy parabolic moves and then just wreckage right out of the open. Whereas Kyle Williams pretty much immediately after that is looking to get short all of these and slamming them to the downside. And these guys are making hundreds of thousands of dollars like the Jack Kellogg's that made 125K by uh, 10 a.m. our time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just absolutely ludicrous of being able to adjust like that so quickly. It was the mental rating that you had to have today. Whereas kind of like I'm mentioning with the mindset that I want to be is I'm trying to look at where the market is, how the market is feeling almost. And it's just like kind of these last three, four trading days where we've had this now shift now from the market and what the sentiment is huge, more dollar volume coming in more parallel movers coming in, more of those retail traders looking to take a stab in these markets. It's totally shifted the way in which you need to trade, have the mentality of what you're looking for. Whereas I was trying to get away so far of only being willing to accept that 10% block as a trade of, well, it's not considered a trade unless it's a 10% profit opportunity. I'm not even looking to take off any amount of my shares until it gets to 10% profit from my entry. Whereas now that's kind of the truth of like, you need to be looking for those 50, 60% movers on the DWAX, on the PHUNs as a minimum almost of how crazy they can go and move where that's a complete 180 from what now kind of slowly I had to learn and get out of that mentality as I started in the 2020 market. Now it's like, I got to go back once again to that of, okay, now if we're on the right track, if we're trading the right things on these DWAX, the PHUNs, all those then you got to be thinking that same thing again of, you know, entry, precise entries and exits aren't the most important. It's kind of just that blind entry. Once again, it's, you know, staying smart, staying risk tolerant to what you can justify, I think. But just also having that perspective of I'm looking for parabolic because parabolic is happening and that can be there. So just adjusting to all of that for me right now, I'm going to rate myself a B on how I was able to adjust today. Not a, not an A rating. Uh, in any way, but I think just slowly continue. I am a slow learner, slow grasper on uh, adapting within 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day of learning what's happening and what's going on. It does make, take me that little bit more time to <coughs> fully comprehend and digest what's happening. So for me, I, I give myself that B rating going forward on the day to day. A lot of uh, other tickers I wanted to mention. A lot of nicey tickers moving today too, which I thought was funny. Tesla having an absolutely insane day today. My Roth IRA is certainly loving the price action today. We busted through that one thousand dollar volume mark, even after the split. How long ago was that split? I don't see it here on the chart. It doesn't seem like that long ago. Wow, it was a long time ago. That's funny, <laughs> but that is absolutely ridiculous. And some other EV movers, other EV tickers moving as well. BE putting in some nice percentage moves today. Nicey ticker. XPEV, same thing. Some other news that they were posting out. Uh, pretty nice percentage move. 11% to the upside today too. So, and again, another nicey ticker. So interesting to see that some of those are moving with some authority percentage wise as well as compared to how they were trading, especially coming out of the summer months. I think that is all I wanted to get for the introduction. Let's get into the trades now, starting with CRTD. I really liked how this one was holding. This is that former runner. Uh, checking the float again, 11.6 million. This company is that American technology company, digital community content, blah, 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 whatever. They had another news catalyst today of Trump photograph as an NFT that they created. Post some more stuff with TikTok. Uh, oh, and now they're coming out actually with a, looks like they dumped a offering at 1247. 
Eastern Standard Time, it looks like, at the market. Uh, so that tanked this thing a little bit more. 1247, that would have been nine. Yeah, right around this time frame. That was that dump there. But anyway, holding, this was only been running the past two days here. Started with the crazy Friday we had yesterday. Um, then looking at pre-market today too, we get that new spike. Well, this is, there we go. We get the new spike coming out today. Looks like it was kind of wedging here with a hard, with a very wide range for what it was doing. Get the spike, pull back to VWAP, bouncing off of VWAP nicely, still consolidating, holding well. Dump to the downside of VWAP, which if I was along there at that point looking for pre-market continuation from there, that would have been frustrating, would have been uh, grinding to the system to try and think this thing could go get back in long again, but it's still consolidating under VWAP, putting in higher lows here. Tapping VWAP as a line of resistance or a point of inflection, but still just not dying off there. So still showing that, especially since it's a crazy mover, people are willing to continue to buy this thing. Getting a few share size starting in small, like I mentioned in the introduction, with only 20 shares as it was holding well, close to this little $7 area that it was hovering around. And then we get to that market open and just bam, smack to the downside. So I was able to actually sell off before that real dump even happened. I think I actually had a halt in pretty close or a stop in pretty close under my entry because I was just consistently how much how when or where I got scarred in 2020 for this type of mentality of putting the stops in so close or this style of trading certainly paid off today to keep me safe in that regard of man I would have been filling which I kind of showed in BENE for how I traded that one um, that'll show in a few minutes here but I was able to get out pretty much unscathed not too much of a bad entry on that one and yeah, shoulda, coulda, woulda been getting short after that halt of seeing if I could even be able to fill shares for whatever. It's not like I'm looking for a repeatable trade pattern after that halt to the downside on any of these, on the DWACs, on the PHUNs, but understanding that, okay, there's some amount of overhead and now the longs like me, like everybody else, I was thinking, hey, it's gonna be another awesome, crazy, nice market day that we're gonna get some nice squeezes that balloon has just completely deflated. So now everybody like that is going to be selling like I was with BNNE, BNE, and it's just an easy little collection as a short if you're able to get filled anywhere around there. <sighs> to cover within a few minutes later, that's just a golden little scalpy trade. It's, even if you do want to try to play it longer, you know, could it could have had that dip opportunity, the little scaling out 11 a.m. bounce area like I talked about earlier, uh, but even on all these charts, the short... Being short on the long intraday perspective was the trading thesis for pretty much most of these on the day to do so. Interesting to see. B and E will go in now. Same type of thing. I really liked the, uh, this is 10 million floater. Uh, the crazy moves as of, as of yesterday on that crazy Friday. Not too much. Ridiculous little daily chart here. Um, really nice pre-market gap up, holding, hovering around that VWAP mark with a little bit of a range, putting in some wiki bottoms as well to show some buying support, but still just kind of a little bit of sell-offs if it does try to perk. But keeping cautious in all of it, again, starting with a very small pos position size, four shares in that first entry. Um, pulls back a little bit more, still above VWAP though. As we get to market open, does start to move higher, touching that little relative pre-market high around 18.5. I get eight more shares to 12 share position size when I was kind of looking to potentially move into a 20 share position size on this one, maybe in 25, 30 shares. Uh, it's not a crazy position size dollar amount, even for my cash accounts trading, uh, but certainly want to be more convicted in a lot of these, start throwing some bigger position size, not only for the liquidity, but the percentage moves as are there. Like I mentioned, you don't have to be perfect with the entries and exits, so you can kind of just uh, start throwing your bids on there if the move is definitely going to be there which was i was looking for the confirmation of that and still starting in smaller and smaller um, but then quickly reversed after that second entry and man what a great epitome of a panic exit on that one got pretty much filled right at the bottom of this candle and the thought went through my head as i was trying to fill the bid trying to yeah sell to the bid uh, it was moving pretty fast but not like crazy fast like an otc or just like non-liquid enough but certainly was just kept skipping through my orders and then everything else that ensues from there of, okay, do I really want to get out here? Do I think it's going to go immediately lower? So now that I've missed it so far, do I think it's going to bounce a little bit that I can get a high refill? That thought went through my head. 
but then always I just, the thought comes back of better to be out than, and second guessing than to be in it and thinking, okay, yeah, I wish I got out a little bit earlier too. So learning back from all these, learning the different indicators on uh, when and where to do that can be applicable of maybe for an exit like this one. Yeah, I could have saved a few cents, maybe, maybe even 50, 60 cents, getting somewhere around the $17 area instead of filling at the bottom 1622 here. Um, just learning of when and where I can do that type of pattern uh, and when it would be certainly a bad idea, like if it's going to halt and not being able to fill there, that's certainly not where I want to be on those ones. So that one was, this was the worst loss of the day, I think like 30 something that one was, oh, whatever that math is, but that was B and E. And then as everything's dumping, I'm looking at Pixie, who's another pre-market mover here. This one was kind of the only one that was holding up. It was reclaiming VWAP after this initial little pre-market spike, spike, and then pull back, back under VWAP. I thought we could get some more action at this one because the thesis was, even coming from me too, as everything else is halted, nothing's trading, and everything's to the downside, potentially maybe everybody's also out. They still got that energy, maybe a little bit of FOMO, or just looking to buy the next parabolic thing. And anything that's green popping up in the scanner, I think this was one of just a very few that were even shown on my scanner. But of course I had this one watching from the pre-market as well. Seeing this one green, I could see a lot more action and volume come on the, in on this one just because of that thesis alone. So just keeping an eye on it, watching around this little top, it would put in that 175, seeing if it started to come in with strength on the bid. I would certainly start to get an entry with very easy percentage moves to scale out, especially right around that $2 whole dollar level area. But then it, it dumped like everything else pretty much right after that. So that was just funny to see quintessential slap in the face that even the th things you think can't dump are just like they have a little glimmer of hope that got smacked down too with Pixie. So that was P-I-X-I. -I. Going to Prog now, which I also traded as a little view app holder style of trade. This one has just been that too resistant to die style of trade. Continually puts in these volume days. <coughs> multi-day holds a little bit harder of a sell-off from this past initial spike but then again had a very nice friday in that crazy day with a very nice vwap old style of trade here with a nice perk to the upside not anywhere close to a 10 percent move uh, well it could have nailed a 10 percent move if you were absolutely perfect on the trade too but i need i need that 50 percent move to make 10 percent for how sloppy i can trade it at times a very nice vwap hold there again holding pre -mar Pre-market pretty nicely going into today. We get a little spike out of the gates, shopping around, selling off under VWAP, but still clinging to that VWAP line with some decent dollar volume. Trying again to just slowly scalp into an entry here as it's still holding, continuing to push the upside. I know in my back of my mind too, it could still be a little bit early. So I get like a 30 shares total for $100 position size. As it's showing a little bit more strength, putting in some nice continuation volume here, especially on this one minute candle. It just chops around wide wicked candles with you know, little tiny bodies just kind of chops around little rainbows holds vwap extremely nicely almost pristinely for bouncing levels puts in another new high but then rejects there and it's at that point too that i say yeah i think this thing should either go from right now otherwise i just don't really want to be in it so I took it for a very small kind of almost break even trade loss as it was pulling back with these two harder red candles and of course it did once again, bounce off of you at perfectly and then create another new just under or yeah, just slapped it barely a new high of day there, but not much continuation on. It's just kind of failed again once under VWAP here for the afternoon session, but still holding kind of decently in this after hours. So it's going to be on the watch list for at least on the follow up watch list. If we get potentially a similar consolidation effect like it had before that last week, Monday on the 18th. Um, these kind of very nice bottoms being put in higher lows that pre-market was building nicely and then can get a huge scale during market hours <sighs> this one's just a weird little characteristic one of how it likes to trade and the type of speed it likes to put in for price action on a slow on a smaller time frame just so that's just things we have to factor in going forward on the next one grnq i also wanted to mention just for for how crazy and ridiculous one this one is also a hard dumper but had a little bit more speed built up in that snowball uh, from pre-market. So the trade I wanted to mention on this one is watching it pre-market. Of course, it's already up a huge percentage as you get into this flag, little consolidation line area here. 
uh, higher lows being putting in as it's still a good distance away from VWAP, but obviously a little like bull flag type of pattern you can see. Crazy little floater. Is that a crazy little floater? 23 million floater. Sketchy company, Malaysia. Sketchy, <laughs> but still just, and then news catalyst for the reason, uh, for the run up. And then, gosh, yeah, you can say, it's hard for me to buy it or justify it in the moment. Man, it's already up so much. It's up to one eight from, it's almost up 100% from where it closed the previous trading day. Do I really think I can buy it here, even though it looks like a good bull flag platform? Uh, but a lot of shorts are obviously thinking the same thing on this one, the play to the downside of longs could certainly see this as a good pattern, but it's up a good amount of ways. And just any amount of pullback would be a nice opportunity to the short side. But then you get slow, continual, hard press all the way up just under 2.9 after that bull flag. That was pretty insane move to come up on again and see after I had foregone any play on that one in the pre-market. But it's whatever, that's trading, certainly, right? And I think I'd especially want to get away from uh, trading these things long in pre-market hard with a big position size. It's not where I want to put the most of my trading size or most of my trading cash, especially to that cash account. I think I want to focus more on the predictability, repeatability, consistency, uh, study ability of market hours versus the kind of craziness and illiquidness sketchiness that pre-market can be but that was it so that's all the tickers i wanted to mention watch those kind of watching for tomorrow the next few trading days gnus and zila kind of look the exact same almost they both have uh, separate little news catalysts in different regards but closing pretty nicely and after hours looking decently as well daily like a standalone candle day here with not the even the most amount of volume that this one has put in it's a former runner of course there's certainly not a history of continuing on for second days, but it could be a multi-day mover here. Same light as Zila. Looking pretty nice. News Catalyst comes out during market hours. Holds on VWAP here. You could trade it just around. You, know, you want to call this an entry here as it's breaking to the upside. You get new high of day and that $2 hold dollar level area. Holding down pretty hard here in after hours as I speak about it. But then again, another little entry opportunity as you get the Breakout that's holding high of day, consolidating once again. Another entry point possibly under that 210 mark. That's a very nice, easy sell into the close there. Uh, so these ones will certainly be on watch. And apparently short sale restricted from two days ago. So that would have been the previous trading day that it got down below 10% from that close, which could be interesting going into, well, it should be done tomorrow then. But watching that one, OCGN. Man, it would be, oh my gosh, this thing is going absolutely ridiculous. Even during market hours, I think it was my average on this swing initially would have been absolutely ridiculous after hours. Uh, nine to two, no, yeah, somewhere around this dip bottom, I think. 940 maybe was my average entry at that point. So Judas Priest, it's still going. <laughs> yeah, I certainly have to be on watch now for this after hours is putting in. Getting close to that previous high I put in a few trading days ago. Uh, gosh, it's tough. Let's we'll see if this anything anything longer than just an intraday or just an after or an aftermarket can last out of this trade for more of a swing style of approach. Uh, but golly, look at that! That is quite awesome to see. Also, wanted to talk about HUT. Or just keep it on watch. This is crypto style of play coming in on a nice little breakout technical level on the daily it's a bit of a higher floater i think more of a real company canadian based mining crypto mining company but again coming coming up under these nice little technical levels 13 dollar hold level as potential little base i'm um, gonna need that volume push to the upside on this one for how much volume it took to get here to this point today um, for how much after hours pre-market trading it does it will certainly need something during market hours to push it hard to the upside pbts Looking for a third day style of play. I'm pretty interested on this one. 8 million floater, Chinese company. Hard sell off on that first day, which doesn't boast well for continuation, in my opinion, because any longs still looking to profit off of this, or any longs, really longs just got so slapped on that first day initially. So that just kind of beats a lot of the wind out of this thing on that first day. 
but it does have just a nice little volume being put in. So kind of getting curly here, kind of getting curly. Once it gets curly, then it gets squirrely. That's the line we use. And then putting in some nice little uptrend today too, not necessarily like going green hard, but moving pretty nicely. It could get pretty. Now I'm going to look around this, you know, half dollar level area, one five as potential key area if that decides to hold for the next pre-market going into tomorrow. See where view app decides to lie. This 155 is especially going to be a point of inflection. Look for any areas on the volume profile chart as well to to see if they want to have any inflection on that. And then last one, PROG. Same thing of yeah, like I mentioned in the individual trade itself. Look for that consolidation like it had last week before any potential up move continuation again. Of course, it's going to be more of a diluted move because it's doing it again. It's a pretty easy pattern to see here. Of, oh, I just look for the bottom being put in, then I buy it, and then it goes up. Of How many times can I do that over and over again before it just doesn't do that? <laughs> computer is running slow. I'll be looking forward to a new computer in the next few days here. But that is pretty much it. Are you ever going to load? Or we can just look at a black screen the rest of the time here. We'll just look at SPY then. That was pretty much it. Another little day in the red. Uh, just more learning, more grinding it out, continuing to... The bear learning process is all about the adjustments to what the market is giving, right? You can think that you're slapping and nailing these different patterns and all of a sudden the market will just pull the rug out underneath you and say, nope, no more of those patterns. We are in a completely new, different environment here. Which is like, it's like you're playing baseball your whole life. And you're training to learn how to play this specific game, the specific way with these specific rules. And then all of a sudden it's entirely different field dimensions and you're learning how to adjust. And it's like the same game, but it's totally different in how you can strategize and how you can play the same type of patterns and different, you know, crossing over analogies now. <laughs> it's, that's why we love it. That's why we're here because the opportunity is ripe and it's fresh and the dollar volume, I cannot uh, be angry at it, even though, I'm certainly red and haven't made money in the past two days on these patterns. It's time to adjust, time to learn and grow and play with what is given to us. Make those lemons into lemonade, even if they're the most refreshing and awesome lemons on the earth. But I think they're just ripe and sour and I don't want to touch them. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. It's This is too long of a video anyway. I thank you guys for watching. We will catch you guys on the next one.